thanks for uh, having me here. It's been a really fun workshop so far. And what I'll talk about is Justin Cheng's uh, summer research internship at Facebook, where he examined the problem of how predictable cascades are. And this is joint work with uh, Alex Dow and Yura Leskowitz and uh, John Kleinberg. <coughs> so uh, this summer, this photo was uploaded to Facebook. It's a Cabela's receipt. Cabela's is a sporting goods store. And the caption along with it said something like, the Obama administration doesn't want you to know that you're paying extra taxes for Obamacare, but Cabela's is not afraid to show this, and they've shown separately this uh, medical excise tax that uh, you're paying for while you're you know, purchasing the stock for your rifle or your you know, um, pistol holster or something like that. It turns out Cabela's inadvertently had charged this tax, but it, wasn't, uh, it was only supposed to be applied to very expensive medical devices, right? So what you'd like to know is what happens next. If I tell you, okay, here the, uh, here's uh, how many friends the user who uploaded this has, or here are properties of the image. It has some text on it. Um, the first few people who reshared it, were they directly friends of the person who uploaded or did sort of skip out of that individual's neighborhood? How rapidly did the reshares occur could you then predict something like this? This is a fraction of the cascade that resulted with the leaf nodes removed and the later reshares are in blue, so you can kind of see a string here, it's branching all over the place, goes up here eventually. You know, is, is something like that predictable? So first, how do we track these cascades? Now, in my Facebook feed, unfortunately, I didn't have the Cabela's receipt, but I get things, you know, more science-oriented usually. So here's one, which is a cake um, that's made to look like our planet. And if I, if I see this in my feed and then I click share, I will be placed in this position in the cascade. So here's my friend and here's my reshare of um, his reshare. Or what I can do is I can click on this because I want to get a better view of like how, uh, how realistic is that cake. But then if I click share here, um, what happens officially is that I've shared directly from the source. And for the purposes of tracking how information is spreading, we don't want that. So we uh, go back through this click and actually attribute my reshare here, just so we're sort of keeping track. And so... Um, the kind of naive formulation of the problem, or version one, is you observe the first little bit here and you'd like to predict whether this is going to happen. Now, there's some very uh, fun research by Sharad Gol and his collaborators showing that that pretty much never happens, right? So 95% of the time this happens and they study this across a variety of different social media. Maybe 3% of the time this happens. This is less than 1%, forget this, right? So your best prediction is actually to just say it won't spread and you'll be right the vast majority of the time. Okay, but you know, maybe you just select the larger cascades so that you're trying to predict whether this will happen or whether this will happen. So th this is actually the same cascade just early and, and a little bit later. But the critique there is that the scenario is artificial and that these large cascades are really rare, so you know, who, who cares about predicting really rare events? But there's a lot of research that tries to predict which hashtags will become popular, uh, which user content will become popular, but focusing on things that were already hits. And then um, the argument goes, well, by the time you've noticed that they might qualify, their fate is already sealed. So prediction in that case is not as interesting. Um, but I'd like to argue that it might still be useful to, to look at this. So, so first of all, it's true for Facebook as well, something that wasn't in the goal um, data sets. When you look at the probability that, a, first of all, that anything is, that something is reshared at all, only 5% of photos uploaded to Facebook are reshared. And then of those that are reshared, half of a percent are reshared, say, 500 or more times, which is kind of a, a decent number. So, you know, maybe we don't want to be predicting those, but if you look at the total quantity of reshares that are accounted for, for by those things that were reshared 500 or more times, that's half of it, right? So we do actually care about those items because half of what we see are those items. 
This is the, the most liked, I think, photo to date. This was posted when Obama was re-elected. It was reshared 600,000 times. Maybe we'd like to, uh, because so many Facebook users, like millions and millions were exposed, maybe we'd like to know um, that that will happen. It's not all Obama, so it's not just Obamacare or Obama getting re-elected. <laughs> Here's a very enterprising young man from Norway who used the million like meme. He wasn't the first one to, to try this ploy like puppies and kittens had been gotten in this way, but he wanted something else. He ended up being a real gentleman about it because he did get a million likes and he said nothing happened, we're just friends and, and so on. Um, but you might think that this kind of um, diffusion might look a little bit different from something posted by the official Obama page. So could you have predicted that? And even if you think, oh, we know that it was reshared a lot because the Obama page posted it and the Obama page has millions of followers, well, this second photo was uploaded a short time after, and it only had 80,000 reshares as opposed to 600,000. So are there factors that you could use to try to differentiate the two? So maybe it's not just about the original upload. So this is how we ended up formulating the problem. And it allows both for studying the very large cascades, if that's what you care about, or you can uh, try and predict them from the very start. And we're just going to get a family of problems where we'll vary that number. So rather than saying we're going to uh, observe only to a certain point and then uh, predict the cascade sizes, we're actually going to vary that point. So a cascade that has four reshares so far, what we're going to ask is, is it going to double in size or not? Um, and the neat thing about actually when your cascade size is, um, sizes are roughly power law distributed with exponent two is that um, the median is actually twice the current size. So if you just integrate from the size where um, you are now and you try to figure out what this function is where you'll have a half of the cascades growing to that size, it ends up just being tw twice that threshold to which you've already observed the cascade. Just to check. Um, yeah, so we can now just track cascades for different values of k. And um, the nice result is that as you increase k, you have better and better prediction accuracy. So because we're um, our data is kind of split in two, the half that reached the, the median and the half that didn't, right? Just random guessing is, is something like 50% is 50 right? So we're doing much better than that. And I'll get into the details of our prediction in just a moment. Um, you might also ask whether it matters once you condition on the final size of the cascade. So um, if uh, you're considering all cascades for which you know that eventually they reached 100 or more reshares, then observing the cascade through the first 25, then 50, then 75, then 100 reshares increases your prediction accuracy. You do a little bit worse if you limit yourself to those that eventually reach 100 to 200 because you've taken away some of the variance. You don't have the very large cascades in there. And if you know that the cascade will eventually reach somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 reshares, then uh, looking at the first few or even the first 100 doesn't actually help you that much. Right? So it, really, it means that the larger cascades are less, um, less predictable. You may also then look at the early development of the cascade and see whether it has anything to do with what happens later on. So this is a chain. So first person reshares, then someone else, then someone else, then someone else, versus this is the other extreme where the reshares are all directly from the source. And what you can see is that, so first of all, this is separated out by pages and users. And for pages, things happen more rapidly because pages tend to have more, um, more followers than individual users who, for the most part, and I think especially for this analysis, we exclude users with lots and lots of followers, so non-public non figures. Basically, for, for pages, this happens a lot more rapidly. It, it would indicate that it's a page with many followers. Um, and these kind of more complex things take a little bit longer. Another thing to look at is the connections of the first reshare. So if it happens that a user reshares and then someone else reshares, but the subsequent reshares 
um, happen from that first reshare as, as opposed to the share, then the connectivity of that first reshare tends to be greater. We could actually also make the prediction problem about the shape of the cascade. So you might look at the average distance in the diffusion tree between any two nodes, and you can have things that are very shallow, or this doesn't show up very well, but things that are very deep. And um, we did the prediction for that as well, and, and you can do it about equally, um, equally well. Um, this is just to show that um, the thing, um, actually we saw with the Obama photo as opposed to uh, the million likes meme, um, as the size of the cascade increases, if it's a page, you can get a very large cascade, but it can be very shallow because the, the page has many direct followers, as opposed to if a user uploads, it's likely that the cascade is actually getting quite deep as it accumulates more and more reshares. There are also potentially interesting temporal dynamics. So um, when the Obama victory photo was uploaded, that's when it got the most reshares, and it was pretty much downhill from there, except um, I think this was Michelle Obama and then Alicia Keys kind of drove some of the reshares. Um, on the other hand, this is what you might think of more as kind of an organic viral development for the million like meme. And it started out small and, and grew and grew and grew in popularity and um, sort of peaked here. Anyone guess what this point was? Yeah, I got the million likes so people didn't have to reshare anymore. Um, again, we can look at um, how this difference between pages and users is, um, shows up in general. So the cascade sizes drop off uh, more directly for users. For pages, it's a little bit, the, the large pages sustain larger cascade sizes, but the user cascade, cascades tend to be deeper. Okay, so the results in brief, um, and I'll describe the features in, in more detail in just a bit, are um, if we use all the features we can think of, and we really thought of a lot, <laughs> we get uh, about 0.8 prediction accuracy. But you can get almost all of this from temporal features alone, and I'll get into these in a little bit. If you look at the resharers, so properties of the first few users who um, share, you do almost as well. If you take all the features but you subtract the temporal features, you can, you can get most of the way there. If you look at structural features, these are the ones that maybe we find most appealing. So if you look at who's resharing and then the friendship ties between them, that doesn't actually tend to do as well. Um, you can look at properties of just the root that does even more poorly, or you can look at properties of the content. Is this uh, an outdoor picture or not? Okay, so I'll show a series of plots that basically look at the correlation of each feature with the cascade, or actually, um, yeah, with whether the cascade reaches a certain size um, as a function of observing more and more of the cascade. And so these are views of the original photo. This is whether the original uploader was a page. And this is how many connections that original uploader has. And so as you can see, the, the more the cascade goes on, the less and less relevant it is um, whether the origin was well connected. You can look at the various features of the resharers, so anything from their age to the gender to how many friends they have or how many fans or subscribers, how many views there were of their reshares as opposed to the original, how many pages were among the first K resharers, etc. And for the most part, what you observe is that the longer you've observed the cascade, the more correlated this is. So you're more certain about what the average age is and what the average gender is. And in general, for, um, for resharing, a lot of that is driven by somewhat older users and especially for some kinds of reshares for, uh, by female users. So those kinds of features tend to help you the longer you observe. Then there's properties of the content. And for the most part, it doesn't really seem to matter. Is it indoor, outdoor? Does it have a person or not? What does uh, tend to matter is 
whether it has a caption, whether it has overlaid text, and whether it's synthetic. So overlaid text and synthetic tend to be properties of memes, and memes kind of by definition are pretty viral and, uh, and tend to spread. And again, this, these content features matter less and less the longer you've observed the cascade. Um, these are the structural features, which we'd like to be very predictive. Um, so, but they actually function in the way that you would expect. So the subgraph feature is how interconnected the first K reshare, reshares are. So if they're actually all friends, it's negatively correlated because uh, if it's only really of interest to a close group of friends, it's not going to spread as far. Um, but depth is actually positively correlated. So if it's actually managing to escape out of that local neighborhood, it tends to uh, spread more. And then the border nodes and border edges are how many, in sum, how many connections and ties do the first K reshares have with the rest of the network. So the, the larger that is, the more it's going to spread. And finally, these are kind of like the winning features um, that tend to, to dominate the others um, are, um, how many views you're getting per unit time of either the origin, so this includes the origin or just of the reshares, um, how much time is, uh, do you have to wait until the next reshare, is the time actually um, increasing, so there's kind of like an acceleration measure, which is uh, negatively correlated, meaning if it takes more and more time, the cascade's sort of dying down, so it's not going to grow as as large. So all of these features tend to do well, and they actually continue to be highly relevant as you're um, observing the cascade. Okay, so fantastic, right? We can do all these predictions. We've thought of every possible feature, so we can predict how um, things are going to um, run their course. The, the thing is that Maybe one unpredictable element is when these are going to occur, when they're going to pop up in the network. And so we're usually pretty surprised to see things like this. So this is one of the most reshared images um, in uh, July. And it says something like, it's just text. Uh, Good luck, everyone. This December has five Mondays, five Saturdays, and five Sundays. This happens once every 823 years. This is called money bags. So, you know, pass this on, you'll get money. It's based on some, you know, Chinese thing, shui, and uh, you, must, you must share this, right? This is pretty silly. And actually, we'd seen this a couple of years ago when we were looking at copy and paste memes, right? Because this is just text, except Back then, it was October, and it was five Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. The 823 always stays. It's always that exact number of years, even though it's, it's not true, because obviously this happens um, pretty often. Um, and it's not clear who got money or anything else, but people like to um, pass this around. And if you look at least um, for in the text variants, you see different bursts. Um, and it's actually of different variants. So here's um, October, Friday, Saturday, Sunday was true in 2010. And then the July is true in 2011. But then there's a variant. Once you shift October to Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that's actually true in, um, in October of 2011 as well. Right? So, so how does stuff like this happen? Like, you know, it's like it's gone and then it reemerges. Well, if you plot the same thing on a log scale, what you see is that even though the, the rise of these things looks pretty um, exponential, the decay is more uh, power law, right? So these things actually persist in really low numbers, somehow waiting for the conditions to be right, and then um, they bounce back. So if you look at the beginning of 2011, actually it was the incorrect October variant that was um, kind of cropping up again, but it seemed to then fuel the correction, the July variant, which was true, right? And, and, and even the, the correct October variant um, happened at that time as well. Another question is, you know, can you ever have, especially with things like rumors and so on, can you have an antidote? So um, Facebook is going to start charging very old rumor first, as far as we know, appeared in Danish in 2009, alive and well two years later in English, even with like a price grid, right? Like how much um, Facebook would start charging. Uh, and then what happened was that there was 
uh, a, a parody of it, saying that you'd have to, you know, do all sorts of crazy things, and then Mark Zuckerberg would personally, you know, come come down your chimney and guarantee that Facebook would be forever free. This actually had a hundred thousand copies of people like actually copying and pasting the text into their status updates, which then led to this meme. You know, not not clear if the original or the parody was was more annoying. What's the dynamic of this? Well, here's the um, rumor that Facebook's going to start charging. Here's the parody, but it doesn't really do much. Here, the price grid variant arrives, and then the parody actually shoots up, and two additional parodies um, become popular as well. There are uh, things that don't even register here that, that are kind of more matter of fact. Look, guys, you can check the Facebook homepage. It says it's always going to be free. Don't worry about it. But, but those don't even register relative to the um, kind of parodies, which is what, um, what catches on. So, you know, yes, we can predict some cascades. I would say, like, good luck, you know, predicting things like this. So to conclude, um, we think we found a principled way to, to just formulate the problem of predicting cascades in the first place, which is let's observe it until k reshares and see if it's going to double in size or not. Um, and what we see then is that individual features, which you might like and you might think, oh, it's, it's all the content or it's all the original node, et cetera, actually vary as you vary k, the amount of time that you allow, allow yourself to, to track the cascade. Um, and then finally, all of this kind of addresses, like, if you have an upload and now you're, it's like, it's fresh, and now you've seen the initial steps and you're trying to predict it, but just figuring out where in the network things are going to pop up might be the difficult part. So, thanks. Do you have any idea whether that's because different types of cascades last for different periods, or whether it's actually that that has something to do with the learning that you're undergoing? So, so there's a, it could be that there's a sorting that certain kinds of boomers are always are, are short, and and things that are funnier go longer, and other. You know, you can imagine stories for why there's going to be different ages. And if you look back at the age and then go backwards, can you tell whether that's the reason that you're getting this fact that different things are predicted at different time periods? I'm not sure that's oh, clear, but yeah, that, I, I think that would be really mm -hmm. valid. Just to, I mean, um, so we did look at uh, separate predictions for things that are uploaded by pages versus users. And um, different features are dominant for, for different kinds of cascades, with the users typically being, user initiated ones typically being the ones that build up and then uh, fall off gradually. Pages usually start high and then, and then decay. So, in that very coarse uh, sense, yes, different features pop up um, differently, but we didn't look at their dependence on K separately for for pages and users. But certainly, yes, I think different features like the acceleration might matter more for the user-generated cascades that are slowly growing as opposed to pages where just the number of reshares to a certain time point might be uh, most of what you need to know. So if you were trying to, to track cascades of certain types, it might be that the same information might be valuable over time. Mm -hmm. It's just that you'd have to sort by types rather than looking at all the cascades with that mean? Right, right. And it's not clear that you know how to separate that ahead of time, right? Yeah. In your structural features, did you look at anything that um, corresponds to things that we use in these diffusion models, like the centrality of the users and you know, they've posted it already, and whether that is influential in predicting the so we only looked at degree, I think, um, and uh, yes, it was it was predictive. So we looked at you know in aggregate what what is the connectivity of these users or. That, but that was in that category structural that was less predictive than the temporal stuff. Uh, actually, no. So that was in the reshare category, which did pretty well. 
So there we just aggregated how, uh, you know, degree centrality of the um, of the reshares, and then also tried to account for whether their networks are overlapped or not, just to see. Um, yeah. Excuse. Oh yeah. Did you do any temporal analysis and find any correlation with uh, uh, like holiday seasons or, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, the events of election and other things, when these things may happen? Right. I think the, the the most we did was uh, time of uh, week and and day, just because we had so many different uh, cascades. And there's little doubt that um, timing does matter. One thing that that we did was we looked at the same image being uploaded multiple times. The thinking was that if you're early. Um, your cascade might spread and then either the network's exhausted or it's no longer relevant and so the later um, kind of seeds won't be as successful, but there was only a very weak correlation. It wasn't necessarily the first or even the second upload that led to the large cascade. It could happen later. Just adding to the unpredictability. I was thinking more in terms of like when people have more time to share the things, like if you're near the holidays, people are more browsing and mm. then they share more and uh, if it uh, correlates to the theme of the event, so it may be much more relevant to describe the kind of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when you um, examine individual instances, it it really makes sense. So, um, a Warren Buffett rumor um, about how to fix Congress was, even though it was uploaded originally in January, it really flared up uh, during the government shutdown. Right? It it makes sense. But if you're doing the and that prediction in general, you can't really delve that much into it. So I really like the idea of trying to formulate this predictability is not, is it predictable or not, but as you accumulate more information, how does that change how much you can predict? And it seems like you've formulated this a lot in terms of the number of reshares that you've seen. But then another thing that you talked about a lot was the importance of time and speed. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, did why did you pick the pick, uh, number of reshares observed instead of time that's been passed? Right, the they're, the they're, they're mirror problems, right? So if you, if you do the other problem, and, and some folks have done this, but you know, not in a systematic way, but they would just say, okay, we're going to look at the first day and then um, predict from there on out. And it's, it's, it really is then the number of reshares up to that point is the most predictive, right? Because it, it's, it's, both of them kind of get at the rate. Um, and yeah, we, we could have formulated it the other way around, but uh, this just made it easier. Or it, it's not really the reason, but one nice feature of, of this in addition is that for the structural features, then you're always dealing with the first K and you kind of can enumerate the subgraphs and so on versus if you're, if you're going up to a given time, right, the, the structure's sort of all over the place because you have a variable number of nodes. But yeah, th certainly you can formulate the problem the other way too. Why don't we um, stop here? Thank you.